Hello everybody and welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. There was a ton of great matches going on on the ladder this week and this is just the first one that really caught my eye. We've got Soma down here at the bottom center versus Bisu in the center right. A three game series that was played on the 27th of September. So really just at the end of this week. Very fresh, hot off the ladder. Soma's been playing. Again, I've uh, been casting quite a few of his games re recently. Maybe I'll put a link uh, at the end of the video. I'm going to try that. Perhaps uh, you can go check that out. He... Yeah, he's in the military right now. And he can play online. He can play uh, in the afternoon when he's finished his work. But... He can't make any money from playing, so he can't stream, he can't play in tournaments or anything like that. It's just a rule for South Korea, so he's trying to you know, keep his skills up. I'm sure he's going to have a hell of a run at the next season of, SS, uh, of SSL, or maybe the season after that. I'm not sure exactly how long his military service will go. I know that they've been changing the rules a lot recently. I've seen some uh, some big changes with how they're actually divvying up their military service. I know that COVID changed a lot of things. Um, but yeah, it's not like he's, you know, in boot camp or anything like that right now. He's probably doing some administrative administrative work during the day and then just coming home and playing a few games on the ladder here against Bisu, who is so, so good right now. I mean, his ZV... Uh, our PVZ is probably um, his best matchup, but he has just been exploding in skill when it comes to uh, PVT as well. He's really been growing a lot as a player. Him along with Stork are really the... the it's kind of funny to say that, but the future of Protoss um, coming way back from the past, but... They really do seem like the ones that are going to be able to carry the race forward uh, in 2024. But, oh, getting behind this Zealot. That's not good. Did put some good damage on that one. But we'll bring out the second here. Just go ahead and push these back. Swapping them out on the ramp. The low health Zealot on the ramp makes sense. Sending out one Zealot on the map. This was an overpool build, and how much m gas are we going to mine here from Soma? Got the probe coming in right now, and one cell it headed across. Oh, how did he slip by here? Oh my goodness. The ramp is kind of big, but I really thought he had that locked down. Two lings making into the main is kind of annoying. But, I mean, it's probably not going to deal too, too much damage. We've got speed on the way. He's still mining that gas. And so it's likely he'll go into a lair just a little bit later on. Uh, but we'll see if he throws down a Hydroden or not here in a moment. These two links are staying alive. When that uh, Link speed kicks in, they're going to become a lot more dangerous. So he's waiting on that. Probe trying to make its way into the main base. He's actually going to see no lair. So that's, actually, that's quite huge. No layer reveals a lot to Bisu here. It's going to be some sort of Hydralis build. And the fact that he managed to get the probe in is going to give him a pretty decent advantage right now. He's got the advantage of information. And in general, I think it is the case that if a Protoss is able to see everything the Zerg player is doing and they know how to react accordingly, they should be in a great advantage. Like, if both players have perfect information, I think the Protoss player has an advantage. Um, there's a lot to Zerg that's about actually deceiving your opponent. They have to be unaware of what exactly is happening on your side of the map, and... When they have that perfect information... Then as long as they react properly and micro their units, they really should have a pretty simple time countering what your actions are. Is Stargate coming online here? 
Still no Hydroden just yet. We're past the five minimar. Oh, there's the Hydroden. Excuse me. Hydroden over here at the third base. I think I actually clicked that earlier, but wasn't fully paying attention as I was pontificating about Zerg versus Protoss. It's a matchup that I've been paying quite a bit of attention to recently because I have been working on a build similar to this, uh, except for you get the fourth hatch a little bit sooner than what Soma's done. He is going to get that fourth hatch, though. So this is not a full commitment into Hydralisk. Uh, into a Hydralisk bust. He is going to be adding on some drones after this. He's continuing to micro these links. He's got one kill only on these two links. So that could have been a Zealot. That could have been a Probe. Not 100% sure on that. But he's doing a lot of micro here with 370 APM. Keeping this Ling alive while doing all of the necessary movements... Uh, to defend his overlords, to uh, build his hydras and get them out to the front. To prevent the scouting here from Bisu. This is actually becoming kind of a pain in the butt. I would actually, I would just let that die. That's, that's starting to be uh, a little bit too much. That's actually going to hurt you. So he does let that die. Um, just spending your APM on microing that around is, it's actually bad at this point, really. Uh, so he lets it go. It's not going to get any more damage. He wasn't able to force a cannon or anything like that. That would have been crazy, forcing a cannon with just two links. So a little bit of a zealot move out. And we haven't been able to kill anything at the front. There was no forge here at the front, though. So it's not a very high priority to eliminate that front wall. But generally, when you go for hydras this early, you tend to be able to pick that off. So it's a little bit unfortunate he wasn't able to get that wall in. He's trying to block the Zealots here. If he can get a nice little block on a few of these, and give the Hydra some more time to catch up, he could get a couple extra Zealot kills. There we go, he gets one. Some good micro here from Soma so far. Now I think he has the, the muscle to actually kill the wall, except for Leg Enhancements is about to finish. And right as that finishes, you become pretty strong against small groups of Hydras. You need actually two full control groups of Hydras to beat this Zealot attack. So not having that means that Soma will have to back away. And we're going to go into that balancing act now of trying to squeeze out the drones that we need while not underproducing Hydralis. Uh, when we need them. So he's going to start producing a ton of hydras. He's got seven on the way. He's getting into uh, his overlord speed now. He's got a second gas. He's actually going to pull drones. That's a little bit surprising. I'm not sure where those drones are going. Okay, there we go. Now he's going to get them into a position where they can kind of block a little bit. They're blocking some of these zealots and preventing them from uh, from attacking. But uh, mostly he, he gets on top of these hydras. And he's picked off quite a lot of them. Starting to go after the drones, too. We started at about 38 drones, now down to 35. So not huge economic damage. But you are going to feel that here as Soma. Nine more drones on the way. He's going to get up to 45, and that's right where you want to be. Spire on the way as well. We could see a Mutalis switch, which would be quite strong. You know, not a whole lot of Corsairs have been made. I'm actually very surprised that he was making... Plus one air weapons. I think that actually finished. I'm not sure though. No, he canceled it. Okay. He did make it and then canceled, but he's only got one Corsair here. And that was just blocked from seeing the uh, the Spire. It's kind of a sneaky spot to put that Spire. And I don't believe that Bisu knows about it yet. So he might get caught completely off guard. Especially if he starts to move out and then those, you know, 10, 11... Me to suddenly come in and deal a whole bunch of damage. We do not have Lurker upgrade on the way, and we're actually going to 49 drones. Time for a fourth hatchery. A uh, fourth base, excuse me. A seventh hatchery, and maybe even an eighth hatchery. Once you get that fourth base online, eight hatch Hydra uh, becomes a possibility. There it is. He's going to go and take that fourth base. At that point, you want about 55 drones. And you're going to be on a significant economy. Very, very strong economy. You can see now with two big groups of Hydras. 
you can easily take on these zealots so he's looking for them at the moment he's searching around trying to find these maelstrom is coming up and online bisu absolutely aware fully aware eyes wide open to the possibility of Muta's coming in and kind of ruining his plans. So he has Maelstrom uh, already researched. It's finishing up just now and has enough energy on this where he'll have the Maelstrom as the Muta's fly in for the first time, which is the perfect timing. Uh, if the Muta's fly in and you don't have that energy or the upgrade, and then the Muta see the Dark Archon, it's much, much harder to do anything with it. But if he comes in and this Dark Archon's completely ready, he can kill all of these. So let's see if he can get this now. Gonna come in, coming forward with the Dark Archon. Can he get it? He will. Beautifully done here. But does he have Templar? Pull the probes. Oh, he's gonna kill some of his own probes. Unfortunate kills there on the probes. However, cleaning up all of the mutas absolutely worth it here bisu gonna look to take a third base now you're at 11 almost 12 minutes it's getting a little bit late but he just cleared out all of the gas investment from soma that was like 10 or 8 8 10 mutas something like that and now he's gonna go into lurkers that's you know eight less lurkers that Soma's going to have for this next fight. He's spreading out Hydras everywhere. Getting ready to flank this army that's coming forward. I don't think Bisu is fully aware of this yet. But he is going to be hitting a timing where the Lurkers are just coming out of the eggs. Like they're they're like halfway done right now. Oh, a counter. Wait a second. This is a beautiful idea. I thought he was going to do a flank on the army. But the counter is really going to mess with Bisu here. And he's not going to be able to hit that timing before the lurkers are done. This is a lot going to buy a lot of time for those lurkers to finish up back at home and him to really get his fourth base economy online. He needs to get that gas rolling and get another hatchery down over there. Everything right now is just about. Oh, he gets the Nexus. Oh, man, I did not expect him to get the Nexus. Uh, I thought maybe running into the main would have been a better plan there to just buy more time, but Let's see if this counter attack can do much from Bisu. He hasn't thrown down the third Nexus yet, so he's running on just one Nexus right now. This is a huge, huge deal. Bisu bringing all of his Templar with this army uh, initially it turns out to be a massive mistake because he just didn't have any storm to deal with the counter attack, and now. This counterattack is not looking nearly as strong. Like when the lurkers were uh, unfinished and just sitting in eggs, you can end up taking a really good fight and just annihilating everything. Oh, he's trying to snipe the uh, observers right now. If he just gets a couple of observer snipes, he can kind of drag this game out a little bit longer. And then he's going to find himself in a really good spot. But uh, Bisu hasn't lost that just yet observers staying alive here in the background the zealots have dried up though we've got like one or two more storms no we have no more storms just dragoons here on the retreat and i have to say this is looking fantastic for soma at this point he's adding on those extra hatcheries now he's got the extra gas rolling we're sitting here on two base versus four base and soma is just about to clear this game up the second is just coming on the line now for Bisu. And he's slowly rallying up two zealots at a time. It's not looking good here for this veteran Protoss player. Having a real struggle against this counterattack style from Soma. I was really thinking Bisu was going to take this when he uh, expertly landed that. Uh, perfect maelstrom and got rid of the mutas so uh, professionally but here it is just getting completely overwhelmed the counter attack turning out to be absolutely the right play in this scenario i have to think about that actually for some of my future games because i have been in this similar situation where you're army is consisting mostly of hydras with lurkers about to come online and the push comes out and i always try to flank that army 
as it's coming up the ramp here but that turned out very very well now if there was like two templar here all those hydras come running up and there's a bunch of cannons and two templar everything dies or everything gets forced back and then your flank is even worse so it comes down to the fact that not only uh did he do an excellent counterattack, but also that bisu brought every single templar he had to supplement this attack i i don't think he brought the archon though funnily enough i think he had the dark archon back at home uh that wouldn't have saved him in the natural but it might have helped a little bit anyways guys we're gonna jump into game number two see if bisu can bring it back and give us a series let's jump right in there's been a series of new updates to Neon Marble Rust since the last sponsored video, and now all three races have been released. There is so much variety and complexity to this game, and I can't wait to dive into it on stream. Each race is completely unique, different units, different resources, different play styles. Come check it out on my channel, and for those of you who are unaware, this is a brand new RTS game from a single developer who is a big fan of Brood War. It's an insane challenge to create an RTS with three races as a solo developer, so hats off to NMR. That's it, try the game, link in the description, free to play, now back to the video. I didn't really see any problem with the opener from either player in the last game. Everything really came down to that counter attack and looking back on it, I can definitely see how that would be really Bisu's fault for not scouting for that army trying to figure out where it was at right before his push if he had sent a zealot or you know a few units up north and seen that huge group of hydra sitting there yeah, he could have moved that direction pushed them back or he could have just left two two templar back at home in his wall to make sure that he didn't get busted either one could have given him a much better chance in that game. Here comes that probe. We are in Pantheon now. And so this map being a much larger map has many more bases to work with. And uh oh my god, he's just what what? Wait, what? What's going on here? Am I missing something? I guess he's got some links popping out here. Okay, he's going to send two back. He wants these two links to push away the probe so that he can get this third. But I was kind of shocked to see him just run by that that zealot there. I feel like um, there was something going wrong with the hotkey or something like that. But he's going to correct things now. Get rid of that Zealot. That was some really nice micro from Soma to surround that. Get the maximum um, surround and uh, surface area on that Zealot. And so he will be able to stabilize here without losing any drones and getting his gas online. Are we going to see another uh, similar build here from Soma? I actually really do like this build now. We're waiting to see where that first 100 gas goes. As Beast is just sitting back at home here. Nothing to do right now aside from get this natural online and finish off this forge. Don't have the cybernetic core just yet. He's already begun mining that gas. And there it is. Ling speed on the way here first. And so with the Ling speed coming up, are we going to continue to mine gas? We will wonder if this is the four hatch hydra build or are we just going to see uh another like hydrogen okay well we've got the hydrogen here and so no fourth hatch means he's gonna want to put some pressure on this there's, there's like a bust potential here for soma waiting for this cannon to finish up so we can send out the zealots five zealots can definitely push back the lings that Soma has on the field right now and perhaps make their way over to the natural get confirmation about what's actually happening oh he's moving out too early Bisu 
has to pull the probes to save the cannon. Really dangerous situation there. You never really want to leave before your uh, cannon is finished. Almost, almost catches a couple of lings there on the ramp. Push forward here. More lings are out. Really wants to get the confirmation about what's coming. He's going to see the hydras. Here we go. Zealots are not going to take the best trade, but it's very important that he saw those hydras. Now he can start to add on some more cannons back at home. I don't see them on the way just yet. But you can expect to see some more cannons coming up here really soon. So there's the first cannon. Hydra range is on the way. More zealots are coming up. Citadel. I'm surprised to see not more cannons. Like what 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 are we what are we doing right now? What's happening? Extra zealot made its way around the top of the map. And it's going to find its way down to the third base, which could deny a little bit of mining. But this is basically 973. I think it's exactly... This is like 982. Oh, we've got a couple more drones now, so... Wow, Bisu really doesn't believe that this is a Hydra bust. Yeah, he's not buying it. He got in there and he was like, no, you're not going to bust me. This is just like a couple of Hydras. And that's it. A lot of Protoss players will freak out. And immediately start cranking out cannons and for good reason you can die super quick to a hydra play like this if he'd continued to build hydras and not added on these drones what would we have seen at the front here he's just gone for range first that's interesting there is a build where you go for hydralisks with range and mass ling and you try to just walk up and shoot down the cannons and use the links to overwhelm from there. And it's not even really a Hydra bust per se. It's more like a, a Hydra assisted Ling bust. Now, that's not what we're going to see here. Not enough Hydras out to keep that Overlord alive. So just three Hydras here poking at the front might be able to get the gateway. But if a DT pops out, oh, he's not quite done the Templar archives. If the zealot speed finishes in time or he gets a dt out i guess he won't be able to save this it's really really close right now some great micro from soma staying on top of this the entire time while mackering behind it some impressive stuff from him but now two zealots out here in the front he will finally push this back plus one is going to begin we've got some corsairs over here just checking to see if any overlords are going to pop doesn't seem like that's the case. We'll move into the main base. See if he can find some sort of damage right now. We've only managed to kill one overlord. And that was the overlord in front of the natural. Hopefully another overlord will start to be produced over here. Because the DT is now out on the field. And we're pretty far off from overlord speed. Could be a, a very deadly attack. If that DT makes its way over there to the third. He sees the DT now. Overlord. Oh, we really need an Overlord here. It's like he's going to start to produce something. But I don't see any Overlords getting made. I'm a little bit shocked about this. The DT is not heading that direction though. Pure drones pop out. Every Overlord is over here at the Natural. That's quite a lot of drones going up to 40 already. And for some reason, this DT is actually going to stay back. Which I'm pretty confused about. There's the Overlords finally coming out. But he could have been over here killing Hydras. And, you know, slowly pushing his way into this third base. Uh, while the Overlords were being made. But he doesn't decide to do that. And it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. However, he did hold on to his gateway. He didn't lose the forge. And the tech is kind of slow right now for Soma, even though his drone count is insane. He has so many drones. 48. Gonna go immediately into a fourth base. We have Spire on the way, and the third gas has been taken. So he can for sure... Pop out Mutus if he wants, but he doesn't have to. Lurker upgrade is on the way now. Maybe just going to opt to make a couple of pairs of Scourge. Get some scouting information. 
Maybe track down these last couple of Corsairs, threaten the possibility of a Mutalisk attack, but remain on Hydralisk and eventually get into those mass lurkers. We'll see though. Corsairs are going to come through. See what he thinks about this spire. He sees it. Are we gonna see? Are we gonna make another Dark Archon and Maelstrom? Don't see it just yet, but it is a little early. Second Evo Chambers coming online. Sim City here could be better. An Evo Chamber right there might actually help out quite a bit. But he's been so aggressive this game, he hasn't really had to defend against these Zealots. He's been out on the map with these Hydras for quite some time, just bullying back those Zealots, and their number is not that high. I think he took a very good trade with the three Hydras at the at the wall in here, just constantly micring back and forth, avoiding the Zealots and dealing damage to the gateway to force them out to, to fight. I think that ended up going pretty heavily in his favor for the most part. Now these zealots going to make their way up onto the high ground. Some eggs are trying to block them. But uh, these hydras will be forced back for now. Going to get into this base. Start to deal some real damage here onto these drones perhaps. As the main army makes its way over towards the natural. He actually turns that around. A little bit surprised to see him not uh, push the issue here as all the hydras are moving uh, up to this center left some lurkers finish and are going to help to clear this out but we've lost a few drones and we forced a lot or there's been a lot of lost mining time as well what are the hydras doing right now oh, okay they're they're actually reacting to this zealot potential run by into the natural uh but the zealots are still getting more kills here soma falling apart a bit he doesn't want to lose control over his natural, of course, but he really needed to clean up these zealots. And he's just allowing them to run over all the drones at this base. This is crazy. I, I really feel like he just missed that. He had all the hydras here, but he just let three zealots survive. What the heck happened? Down to just 46 drones. It's still a reasonable number for three bases. We actually need to transfer some of these drones over here. And we need to get rid of this Zealot with seven kills. This guy's been an absolute hero. Everything getting pushed back right now. Up onto this high ground. And so Soma, you know, he's got a pretty good position here to defend. But, man, he really needs to make a lot of drones. And that's going to give so much time to Bisu. He'll be able to set up two bases easily and go up to four bases. We're going to have to see... This gets stretched to a super long game if someone wants to win. He can't really take good fights right now. Uh, unless Bisu just like runs into him. And loses everything to Lurker Hydra. Um, like if he moves around, unbros everything and tries to come into the natural or something. Bisu will dominate that fight. There's just not enough stuff for Soma right now. He had to spend a couple of rounds of Larva to just rebuild that drone count and make this fifth base worth it. And so he's just going to be sitting back for now and immediately going into a Queen's Nest. Hive will be on the way here shortly. It's uh, not the earliest Hive in the world, but 14 minutes. That's around the time when you could potentially have Defilers out if you're just playing a straight up macro game. Uh, and the Hive will just be starting here in a moment. Big wide open choke over uh, in front of the fourth base for Soma. It's going to be assaulted now. Coming forward and trading out some storms. Dragoon fire here on a few of these Hydras, but... The Lurkers are still kind of tucked back in a nice wide arc. A little bit hard to get any shots on them. The Hydras come forward. Every time these Dragoons try to poke, he wants to commit the Zealots here onto the Hydras, but the Lurkers will start to deal that splash damage to the Zealots, and that's never what you want. You don't want to allow the Zealots to actually get hit by these pesky lurkers plus two is already done so 
They are hitting hard at this point. Two armor, one side blade upgrade here for our Protoss, and he's going to take a fifth base. So the fifth base coming online starts to make this very scary for Zerg, but I, I don't think he has the muscle to deny this next base and take a big fight against Protoss. He's making the transition happen now. He's going into Hive. He will have Crackling soon. Defilers will be out, and that's really where someone will have the opportunity to begin uh, getting aggressive once again. Uh, perhaps shutting down some of these bases of Bisu, maybe taking a fight with all the Zealots and Dragoons here in the middle of the map. If you get a Plague on that, and you've got Crackling, you can absolutely cut through these units cost efficiently. If you keep just keep throwing Lings and Hydras into them, this is fine because he's defending the Lurker line, but if you're actually trying to kill this army, you're not going to get very far. You're going to end up spending your entire army uh, and all of your rallies just to finish that off. And there's more rallies coming out for, so for Beast all the time. His Econ is really, really good. So he's going to be adding on more gateways and just pumping out insane amounts of units. We should be seeing Robos being thrown down here shortly as well. You can get a Robo in each base, like a Robo down here in the corner. He's actually building a gateway here, so maybe he'll just pump Templar. But if you get a Robo and a gateway, and you make a couple of Reavers and a couple of Templar, the base is basically unbreakable. Now, a little Zealot run by over here to the top left could deny the hatchery, and I think it will, which is a pretty big deal considering that Soma is on even bases with the Protoss right now. A little bit rough there, eating a max damage. Uh, Storm, just kind of ta taking it there. Not a good feeling. But we're growing in supply, we're up to 145 now. Filer's Mound is done, I think we might have Plague at this point because it's very rare that you ever get Metasynaptic Node uh, before that Plague upgrade. Retaking this base. Over in the top left, Soma. Gonna clear out those few Zealots that remain. And let's take a look at where the upgrades stack. No attack upgrades just yet, but that's about to finish. We're about to be a uh, 1, 2. 2 Carapace, 1 attack. And looking at the Protoss player, two, two, and one shield already. That's pretty darn strong. You can see he's not continuing to upgrade Protoss armor because those plagues are about to come online. The shield upgrades are far more valuable in late game PvZ, especially when you start to mass Archons in these type of situations. Adding a bunch of cannons up here, and there's the Robo with this fresh base. That's exactly what you like to see. We might even get uh, the upgrade for uh, Reaver damage. Although, the uh, shuttle speed definitely takes precedence. Nice snipe there on a Templar, and a good dodge as well. Someone taking some decent trades here in the middle of the map, while Bisu retreats from that upper left. Good snipe on one of these Archons as well. The Archon number, as it gets higher and higher, they function slightly like siege tanks in that they hit kind of a critical mass where once you've got like 10 Archons, you can kind of just walk through a Dark Swarm. If they have a Dark Swarm here and a Dark Swarm here, you know, and you know four or five Lurkers underneath, You've got that big clump of Archons. You can kind of just push right through it. And there's not really much that the Zerg player can do to stop you. Because the uh, under the Dark Swarm, of course, Archons are also protected uh, from Hydralis. And Hydras are really the counter to the Archon. The Archon does very well against uh, Zerglings. Doesn't do great against Lurkers, but it does all right. And the Hydras are the thing that really smacks them down. They do full damage. They're explosive damage. They do full damage versus the shields. And they just kill those units 
pretty darn fast. And there's a DT over here. Lurkers are trying to get in under the Dark Swarm. The DT doing a lot of work here, I imagine. Six, seven kills already. We're trying to get some Overlords in so that we can spot for that. Help to get rid of that DT. But it seems like um, that DT is going to survive for quite some time. Okay, did die finally. Maybe from a storm. No Reaver down here. So he may end up losing this base. Trying to come up on the high ground here with the Lurkers. Sending waves and waves and waves of units. To uh, get up here. But the Zealots will eventually clear. Okay, another DT in the mix. And finally the Defiler is going to come out. Maybe throw down a Plague. You see that? Okay. Reasonable plague there on some of these dragoons. And we've got a shuttle on the other side of the map. Is he going to get a big storm uh, on the mineral line? Going to be able to kill a huge amount of drones. Let's see. Heading around the left hand side now. More and more lings coming into this position. There's the first storm. Pretty decent four kills. Gonna leave the Templar there and go for another base. Another good storm here. And five kills. Pretty reasonable. Looks like the Dark Swarm has run out, so you can kind of just uh, sit back for now. There's a Defiler here, though, so another Dark Swarm will be coming in shortly. Looks like that shuttle did end up getting picked off. Maybe some Scourge, maybe some Hydras finishing that. At 52 drones now. Oh man, this is, a, this is a little bit rough. I think Bisu may end up losing this base, although it's not the most important base in the world. And he's sucked up quite a bit of the resources from this. Wow, DT centered here are legendary. They're going to be doing so much for keeping this base alive. One-shotting those Lings. Dealing huge amounts of da damage to the Lurkers. Now another round of units coming in here. The cannons can't really do anything until that Dark Swarm runs out. Finally, it is start it, it kind of running out here, but not enough storms to keep this alive. Meanwhile, Bisu trying to break in here. That's becoming quite a lot of Lurker, but or quite a lot of Archons. However, uh, you can't be losing this critical mass. We're not quite at that point yet with just seven Archons here. You can punch through some positions, but you really want to be keeping these alive. With the Reaver, though, hey, maybe he can hold this high ground. Yeah, these are, these are this army from Soma is going to try and come up this ramp. And he's just going to let the Archons go wild while the uh, Reavers are holding this high ground. More Zealot reinforcements coming in here. Looks like he will finally finish off those two Lurkers. They were dealing a lot of a damage, though, without any... Oh, wow. Okay, Soma taps out. That one position with seven Archons on the high ground and two Reavers turns out to be a little bit too much for Soma. He spent so many resources and so many units trying to break bottom center. While Bisu already had top left, I feel like this base is so much more important in the grand scheme of things. If this base is allowed to mine, how much more money are we actually going to get out of this? Yeah, a few thousand more resources. You know, the gas still has some uh, gas left at it. But this base over here, if Bisu f gets this, then the game will go uh, either in his favor or will end up you know having a mine out type of situation uh before soma can win so this seems a little bit crazy to me not attacking into this rather attacking into this constantly it is very close to the rally but perfectly countered here by bisu who held on for an insane amount of time at bottom center exhausted this Zerg player and eventually forced him into a terrible engagement on this high ground. Bit of a difficult uh, map position here once they get up on top of this little, this little whatever it's called, little island here, high ground island. With this many Archons and the Reavers, how do you ever break through? How do you ever get up there? Selma doesn't see a way and he taps out. 
but I want to really go back. Let's let's just think about how much different this game would have been if Soma had just killed, left just a few Hydras to kill those three Zealots that ended up killing his entire economy at this base. How much different this game would have looked. He was completely on the back foot after that. And it just goes to show even the strongest players in the world can make small mistakes. And it only takes one small mistake such as that to put you in a bad situation that's difficult to come back from. And Bisu was not having him come back in this game. He pushes the issue and finishes him off. He secures his future here in the top right. And he ties up this series going into game number three, guys. That's coming right up just after this. Okay, guys, we're hopping into game number three. And I, I feel like this is a good time to maybe address something that has been coming up in the comments quite a lot. And for a very, very long time, I've kind of ignored the issue, kind of sidestepped around it. But here we are with two barcode accounts. This one being Bisu, and this one being Soma. And I always seem to get comments from people saying, oh, how do you know that Soma? Or, oh, that's not Bisu. I know Bisu, that's not him. And I find this to be a very silly thing for people to say, um, but also kind of annoying and ignorant. Um, and I, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys how I know that this is Bisu and how I know this is Soma so that maybe some of you guys can can maybe appreciate it a little bit more um, what goes into finding out who these players are and maybe just like cut down on some of these comments um, probably it won't work but hey it's worth a shot I guess and maybe some of you guys are interested in that this player how i find out that the players are uh these two you know this is soma and that's bisu is i actually don't i outsource finding out about who these players are to a group of highly motivated and just passionate people who do all of the legwork for finding out who the players are on the ladder and i donate to a group um, or a specific guy who made a website uh, that helps people to find out uh, information about the ladder and, and find out information about uh, the players on the ladder. Uh, it's called seawall.gg. Um, they use, I don't know what technology, something about API to scrape for all of the ladder games uh, that are played and aggregate them onto uh, a platform where everything can be downloaded. So we can go ahead and find out about Soma through a number of different means. For example, you can go on to his uh, stream, uh, watch him play some games. Then you can see what account he's playing on. And by searching that account name on seawall.gg, we can find his uh, battle.net account name and then we can find all of his smurfs. Um, so he's just playing on a smurf right now. Uh, he'll have, you know, maybe f five, seven different accounts uh, linked with that battle.net account, and we can find them all. And then we can kind of track them and see what uh, games he's playing. Uh, if there's, you know, there's no stream or anything like that that uh, will reveal this account, there's a whole method to uh, checking hotkeys and there's like a a very deep uh, kind of a backstory to this which I don't fully understand but you can aggregate players hotkeys and look at them uh, you know layer them over top of each other and find patterns in the players hotkeys everybody plays a little bit different they macro a little bit different they uh, hit their keys a little bit different and you can kind of get a little bit of a fingerprint from each player. Uh, it's not a perfect way to find out uh, who the players are and which accounts are linked to which different players, but it's a pretty good method of figuring out who's who on the ladder. And uh, so I rely on uh, this group uh, centered around seawall.gg. I donate to them like many players do. And if you're interested in uh, seeing Brood War 
content like this and you know you want to get in on those conversations and and find out about these replays then you should probably donate too so i'll put a link down in the description below uh to their patreon page and uh you guys can donate if you want oh man these zealots are slipping by that's super annoying these lings here are supposed to be uh like this is why they're here is to <laughs> check for these zealots when they move out um you can see he just checked and he saw that there's no zealots in the wall and that's a kind of a problem so he's spreading out his lings everywhere and he's just completely missed this he thinks the zealots are on this side of the map but they're actually over here he's gonna find out in just a second there it is now all the lings are going to come back i hope that was a great good enough explanation for all you guys as to how i know about these players and so hopefully we won't get any more um comments i'm looking at you mist constantly commenting um, how I, how do you know that this player is that player or that player is this player? Uh, all I see is a barcode. Just uh, understand that there is a whole ecosystem behind the scenes of people figuring out who these players are. Uh, it's a lengthy process and it is done purely for our benefit um, and just a love of the game. So we need to appreciate those people. And uh, yeah, links in the description, guys. Now, Hydras are coming across the map. It seems like Soma's just really content with going this exact same build every game and just practicing it over and over and over again. You can see he's built like four or five Hydras here. Yeah, five, uh, six Hydra is actually defending the Overlords right now. Um, and he's just gonna try and kill the wall. Range again gonna help him to start to hit this forge a little bit hard to get any good angle on this forge with anything more than one hydra and he even forces that hydra back so you have to find that position once again which is already difficult enough to find the first time around and he may actually not be able to find that oh two uh, corsairs coming in here he finds the angle on the gateway at least, but that's not really what he wants to kill. He'd much rather kill the forge, but with just one Hydra attacking, you're not going to get it in time. So I guess he's going to have to give up on that. It feels like Bisu is starting to feel out this build that Soma is repeatedly going for again and again. And putting these cannons right up next to the wall. Oh, okay. He's got two Hydras hitting it, but I, I still don't think it's actually going to kill. Uh, especially because the zealots can come out and buy time. Let's see, though. Okay, he's getting it kind of low. This is a little bit scary. I think Beast will have to pull the trigger here in a moment. Yeah, it's going to come out and start to fight. He will kill one Hydra. He kills two Hydras. I think that's good enough. That's enough time that's been bought here. He goes for it. Can he actually get it? Oh! Oh, he got it. That is insane. Oh, man. Soma. He has no idea how close that was. Like, I'm sure that he he's aware that that should have been almost done by now. But that was a hair's breadth away from being finished. Like, if you look at the, the progression tab there, it was completely done. But somehow not quite finished just yet. And so he picks that off. These Zealots, without their plus one, are not going to fight nearly as well against the Hydras. And we've already got, you know, one and a half groups of Hydras now. Maybe a little bit more than that. It's going to be easily enough to push everything back. Pneumatized Carapace is coming online now. Giving those uh, Overlords a bit of an arid exterior. If you know what Pneumatized means then you would be in the know. These guys are going to be floating around very quickly here in a moment. Corsairs with only one kill between the two of them. Not getting as much damage as a regular Bisu Corsair. What we expect from him anyway. We have missile attacks nearing completion and it'll actually be... The Zerg player ahead on upgrades for once. Something that we rarely ever see. Not for long though, as we have double upgrades coming along here for Bisu. Some more gateways. 
getting added on as well. Just four so far, but five and six are coming up. And these zealots are in a kind of a funny position. This is a little bit interesting. He's going to come in and hit the natural, I think. Try to run by uh, at kind of an inconvenient point in time for Soma. Maybe right as this attack comes in, he can send these zealots into the main. But kind of funny to see him just hiding these for so long. Usually they'd be running around and looking for opportunities, but he, he thinks that he's like maybe a little bit better off just having these be an unknown for Soma to chase around the map and try to look for. I have an interesting methodology here for Bisu, but while these are not getting any damage, neither is Soma's army. It's just kind of wandering around in the ether here in the middle of the map. There's the Dark Archon once again. This time, do we have a Spire? Spire is here. Kind of a interesting location this time for the Spire. Remember last time it was over here. This time a little bit more exposed and easier to scout that Spire. Ah, he will find them. Okay, finds them with the Overlord. And he's going to set up a trap here. This is very, very nice for Soma. Going to make sure that he kills all these Zealots. And the Zealots, they don't even have plus one. So the Lings are going to body block and tank for a very long time. Yeah, only four managed to escape. Very low on HP, all of them. And a third base will begin here for Bisu. Ventral Sax. One of the, uh, the best named upgrades in the game. I don't know what that, uh, what that means to you guys, but yeah, I, I really don't know what Ventral... What does Ventral mean? Ventral Sax. I feel like it's... Something to do with front or forward? I don't know. Like forward sacks? Like uh like in the front of the overlord, but I, I, I'm honestly just guessing. Does sound kind of dirty though, if I'm being real. Big drop, and it is dirty, in fact. Big drop heading into the main base. This is a filthy move for any Protoss player who's experienced it. The drop into the main at this point in the game will force all these dragoons to try to run back into the base and you could easily snipe the templar archives you can snipe the nexus potentially the cybernetic core is also in this area if you get the uh, templar archives the nexus or the, the the citadel oh there's the citadel over there so you can't actually reset the tech fully but he can kill this Templar Archives, which will delay Templar production for quite some time. At the same time, he may end up going for an attack over here towards the third. Going for the Observer right now is a great play. He gets the Observer. But there's no more Lurkers left here in the main. That would have been so sick to delay the mining here in the main for a much longer time by just sniping that one Observer. However... Bisu will get back to mining here. He doesn't lose the Nexus and he doesn't lose the Temple Archives. So the only thing this really uh, did for Soma was it forced back the army into the main. And he's set up a big contain here at the front. At the same time, he could continue to drop into the main. Or maybe get up onto this high ground. One thing that you can do right now is set up a whole bunch of lurkers out here. And then start to assault this third base. You'll force the Protoss army to come to you with that. So he's uh, sending a drop up here. Um, I don't know how efficient this is going to be. He's going to drop right on top of the cannons. We should see Storm come out. It's a half decent Storm there, but I think the base will fall regardless. All of the Zealots coming out here against these Lurkers and taking a pretty rough trade. Diving forward here on top of some of these Dragoons. Gonna eat those Storms, but good pullbacks here from Soma. Preemptive pull back, pulling back, in fact. Knowing that there will be Storms there. Another very nice pullback there. Dude, Soma looking so good in this game. And we might actually be close to the end here. Bisu being forced all the way back into his base. We don't have a fourth or anything, but 43 workers... I think that Soma's going to be feeling pretty good here with plus two done. It's 2-2 two, two for Bisu. More lurkers being made. He's going to come across the map and see what he can do. There's actually a bunch of lurkers being made over here. Which means there's not really much back at home to defend. 
But he can hold this high ground probably for some time with the lurkers up here. Slow things down. While coming in from the rear, trying to snipe Templar and stuff. Now it looks like these uh, lurkers are just going to make a run for it now. Doesn't want to get trapped up on top of that high ground. There's the uh, Dark Archon. He's trying to focus it down. Can he actually get that? Ooh, nice snipe. Getting the Dark Archon, the red boy. Not going to live... Not going to be useful in this game. I don't think it even casted one spell, unfortunately. Probably could have uh, used that just for the Maelstrom. I don't know if he researched Maelstrom. Maybe, maybe he didn't real research Maelstrom. I wonder. Because after seeing that there's drop, there's really no reason to research that any longer. What if he overloads? Is he going to do a fake drop into the main? Oh, this can be so deadly. Fake drop into the main and then a big attack into the third. Just kill the third base. Nope. It is a real one. No cap, as they say. Going straight into the main base right now. There are two Corsairs here to start to damage these overlords, but there's really nothing that can outright stop this. And Lurkers are going to come over towards the natural again. They're actually going to be overwhelmed. I think Beast is just going to counterattack. Uh, main base is going to be under huge threat. He's probably going to lose the majority of the uh, gateways here in the main. A lot of pylons, but maybe he can transfer probes to here. And just do one massive counterattack towards the natural. Which might be able to get Bisu a quick win. It's going to come down, all come down to this. So we've got three Templar, a lot of Zealots, a good chunk of Dragoons, but... Soma holds the high ground, and Lurkers are going to pop. Lurkers popping out here. All burrowing up here on the high ground. Storm, where is it? There's a storm on the Hydras. If he just storms the Hydras here, he can push through with the Dragoons, but not good enough. Bisu taps out. Another tactical victory here for Soma. We saw him win with the counterattack on this map. Uh, in game number one, Bisu with the comeback, able to take him out in game number two, but another beautiful tactical play here. Not something you tend to see out of Soma. He's not this type of player usually who would just drop into the main base over and over again like this. This is more like a zealot style of play. But Soma did it even better than I think uh, zealot would be able to. Like his overall macro... His positioning, the way that he contained the natural and killed the third. Setting up himself up for a secondary drop. This is all like all the... All the strings in this game are linking together. All the dots can draw the lines between them. The logic is sound the way that he played this one out in Soma. Showing us a great propensity for ZVP. Able to take down Bisu in a best of three here on the ladder. Despite not being in tournament condition right now. It sure seems like he is. Despite being in the army and not having his full open time to practice. Just doing this kind of part time on the side. Without making any money off of it. Streaming or anything like that. He's just able to play like a normal person really. Which might actually be good for his professional career. To just come home after work and play a few games. Practice a little bit here and there. Sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a break. Uh, to take more time to think. Rather than just constantly playing games. Hundreds of games every single week. It's sometimes nice to have a bit of a hiatus. And although it may be good for his overall career and his professional uh, life in brood war i personally cannot wait to have him back soma will likely be returning for the next season guys and i'll be returning tomorrow to bring you more games of brood war from the ladder thank you so much for watching and i'll see you then